The buttons in this video were supplied by Lumi Maniac, the arcade gaming and LED lighting store. If you're watching this video, chances are that you've had some previous experience with the use of arcade buttons. That means even if subconsciously you are aware of the difference in how buttons can feel. Compared to using a keyboard on a computer, when I see a new keyboard, I want to type on it to experience how it feels, but also how it sounds. And you get a feedback that you can only feel when you actually use it. You will know immediately whether or not you like it. The exact same thing is true for arcade buttons. If you find yourself in a situation where you can choose which button you would like for a certain application, you'll quickly notice the wide variety of options available. You may want to replace a button in your arcade stick or build one yourself maybe, or perhaps even a bar top arcade or a full size one. Your choice of button may seem trivial, but it has a massive impact. There are so many different types of buttons, many of which can be combined with different micro switches that choosing the right combination can soon be overwhelming. You'll want all the information you can get, which is what I'm trying to provide in this video. These are the buttons I bought when I built my own first arcade stick. I chose them because they were cheap and, well, they were buttons. I literally didn't care about anything else, while in fact, I had these to choose from. There's a couple of things I think you should know about buttons. Two things have a major influence in the feel and the sound and the feedback of a button. The plunger and the micro switch. Have a look at this button. I've completely disassembled it into its individual parts. There's the housing, the plunger and its spring, the button top, the micro switch connector and finally the micro switch itself. As you can see in some buttons it's quite easy to add a decal or a design of your own. Fun fact is that chromed, transparent, or other LED buttons actually rotate a little bit each time you press them. This can cause your decal to rotate as well, which can be prevented with a little bit of glue if necessary. You have to be careful though, because plastic and glue aren't the best of friends. The Saimitsu and the HQ Silent Gold Leaf LED buttons are the best suited for customizing with your own decals. Buttons have either a built-in micro switch or a socket to insert one of your choice. These sockets are standardized so you can fit any micro switch in there that you want. This allows you to modify certain features of a button like the clicky sound they make or the lightness of their action or the way in which they give you feedback. There's actually an entire science that goes into describing and creating so-called haptic technology. Haptic has everything to do with how you use your sense of touch. There are many different micro switches. They come in several weight categories. There's like 50 grams or 75 grams or 200 grams. Contrary to what is often assumed, this does not refer directly to their actual weight, but to the amount of force that has to be applied to press them down. Have a look at these. These are all micro switches of different brands. It's difficult to describe the difference of how these buttons feel, but I can try and let you experience the sound they make. Now this one's by Zippy. And look at the difference in build quality compared to this cherry switch, which is a lot more delicate and quiet. The Baolian Ultimark game switch also feels like a heavier switch. And there's the Blee heavy duty switch. And the one by Ace Make. And then there's the Suzo Hap E-Switch, which feels easier to press and it's a little bit more quiet. Naturally, for an action button, you would choose a lighter weight ranging from 50 to maybe 90 grams. A more functional button will sooner have an operating weight of 200 to 250 grams, which will make them last for a long time, but they're also louder. Let's now look at the other important component, namely the plunger. Personally, I find the effect of the switch greater than the effect of the plunger on the overall result. Most of what I feel when I press a button seems to come from the switch instead of the button. 
but you only notice that when you remove the switches and then press the buttons. The force required to press a button down and the force used to push the button back up is supplied by a spring in some buttons. The strength of the spring naturally has a strong influence on the feel of a button. However, some of the most prestigious buttons, like the ones made by Saimitsu, have no spring at all. They rely entirely on the micro switch that is sometimes built in. A Saimitsu button with a built-in 75 micro switch feels completely different than a retrofitted 75 gram micro switch in a spring-loaded button. Of course, your consideration for a button switch combination may also be influenced by the environment in which it will be used. You may want a button to remain service-free in a heavy use environment, or you may want a button to be very silent for use at home. A very clicky button that works well in an arcade may drive your family up the wall. Then again, a very silent button from a renowned brand like Sanwa may not give you the haptic feedback you like. So don't just go for the hot selling buttons that everybody talks about. It's always good to try a number of different buttons if you can, or take the advice of someone you trust. The Suzo Hap buttons are found mostly in commercial arcades. They may not be the most refined buttons, but they can take a beating and will cause players to take a break every now and again. Remember, dead fingers and painful forearms from pressing a heavier button many times means more money in the machine. The remaining features of buttons involve their color, some buttons are chrome, but watch out for cheap fakes, their shape, they can be convex or concave, their profile, some buttons are quite high, some are low, their decals and their bevels. A low bevel on a button can be very comfortable and even necessary when playing fighting games. And buttons fitted with a LED light can have a spectacular effect. There are mainly two ways of attaching a button to a faceplate, using a ring to screw it down or a snap-in mechanism which clamps itself into the drill hole. These snap-in buttons are better suited for thin plates. You may want to route out a recess if your faceplate is thicker than a few millimeters. Now, with all that out of the way, let's have a quick look at some popular combinations. This panel is filled with buttons combined with switches. As you can probably imagine, the number of combinations is quite vast. This is just a selection and I'll try to explain how I experience them. The HQ Silent Gold Leaf buttons come with an integrated clickless micro switch and is very, very quiet. These have no spring and feel very solid. The buttons are also, by design, protected from pressing in too far, so a good lifespan combined with a solid feel and feedback. The Arcade Classic button is combined with a Blee micro switch, and it's a button that's built to last and is designed for a commercial environment and arcade cabinets. Think of museums, exhibitions, interactive displays. It's available in six different colors. The Suzo Hap competition with a cherry micro switch is a real powerhouse with its extra silent spring action and flat bevel, which can be retrofitted with any switch you like. Combine this with a 50 or 70 microgram switch and you're the king of the game room. The Saimitsu buttons need no introduction. They were the first to market their professional buttons and are renowned for their feather light touch. You can just rest your finger on it without pressing it in. If you take your gaming serious, Saimitsu is your friend. It's a button with a built-in switch, ready for customizing, and it can be lit from behind. This button is fitted with the Baolian soft click leaf switch. It's a 90 gram switch, and it's very slightly clicky and pretty light. It's very much like the HQ Silent Gold Leaf, but with a click, and it's just a bit heavier than the Saimitsu and the Suzo Haps lightness. The square high profile LED seems like a good function button, but my own Crazy Kong cabinet uses it as a jump button for Mario, and I wouldn't have it any other way. You can even fit it with a LED. Then there's the HQ Silent, but with a transparent look, it's good for lighting as well. The transparent LED is a very versatile button that can be lit and easily customized comes with an optional high profile ring and serves very well as a functional button meant to draw attention. 
Of course, with the correct micro switch, it turns into a great action button as well. The Sanwa OBS F30 is a snap in button with a built in micro switch. It's a very well known button and it has a characteristic light action and it's used in high end fight sticks by well known brands. Sanwa is my personal choice, but I chose to go with a 50 gram Suzo Hap E switch. Looking back, I might have also gone with the Suzo Hap button combined with the Cherry D44X switch, but the difference is actually minimal. The HQ Chrome LED is another versatile button available in a high and a low profile version and it can be fitted with a separate micro switch. As we have seen, it's also very easy to fit with a custom decal. The HP Convex LED button is very well suited for reaction games and launch button in a virtual pinball game. Then finally, there's the clip-in arcade button, which is another classic low-end button with a light touch and a light click. Quite honestly, this button reminds me most of my original selection for my own arcade stick. It's an affordable choice and it will serve you well until you're ready to upgrade to a better button. I really hope I've been able to give you the information that you need to make an informed decision about your own buttons. I'd like to thank Chris from Lumimaniac for lending me the buttons that I needed to make this video. I put a link to his web shop in the description, uh, so please pay him a visit. Thank you for watching.